At least 18 pupils have been killed in a minibus accident. Untlamedze Palazze's zest for life is remembered as she's laid to rest. It's Friday. Hello and welcome to it. You're watching E! News Direct. I'm Duduze Leramila. And I'm Sandy Leramose. Welcome. To comment on any of our stories, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. That's at E! News Direct. And tonight our hashtags are Bronco Sprite and Unclamity Funeral. We start with this. At least 18 pupils and two adults have died in an accident outside Bronco Sprite in Gauteng. Officials say the primary and high school pupils were in a minibus taxi. It's believed the vehicle may have collided with a truck when it miscalculated a turn. Tuane Emergency Services says the vehicle caught fire after crashing paramedics and other emergency personnel attended to the scene. The Provincial Education Department says the pupils were from more than one school. Uh, a minibus that was uh, ferrying, you know, school learners from two schools in uh, Sokuluni and uh, another farm school uh, were involved in a horrific accident with a truck and uh, the minibus immediately caught fire after they managed to save uh, about uh, seven people you know from the scene uh, we can confirm that uh, 20 people died on the scene uh, that will mean that it's two adults and uh, 18 of those learners at the same time, the Transport Department says the bus strike is partially to blame for the spike in Easter Road deaths. The number of fatalities has climbed by over 50 percent this year. Preliminary numbers show that 235 people died during the Easter holiday compared to 156 last year. Transport Minister Joe Maswangangi has released preliminary Easter Road death statistics. And they don't make for pleasant reading. There were almost 80 more deaths this year compared to 2016. KwaZulu Natal recorded the highest number of deaths, followed by Gauteng, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, the Eastern Cape, and the Western Cape. Half of the fatalities were passengers, with pedestrians making up another quarter. One of the problems this year is that the country's roads were a lot busier. Did the bus strike contribute to this? I really believe yes. Because this actually increased the number of cars that were transporting people, travelers. Authorities are now desperate for ways to reduce the carnage on the roads. We are at an advanced stage in negotiations with the Department of Justice to finalize the introduction of the minimum sentences for negligent and reckless driving. This is done in order to seek the, to reclassify drunken driving from a Schedule 3, which is less severe, to a more severe Schedule 5 offense. Officials say the figures can only be finalized in 30 days as some of the injured remain in hospital. Malunge Lupui, Pretoria. Unklamedze Palazze's love of life has been remembered. Friends and family members said their final farewells to the teenager as she was laid to rest today. The 18-year-old lived with progeria, a rare genetic disorder which causes the body to age rapidly. She died of lung failure last week. I don't know what we're thinking. She called herself the first lady of South Africa. Unklamedze Palazze's story first captured the nation six years ago when she featured on ETV's then investigative show, Third Degree. Sit down and listen carefully. For many years, her family had battled to figure out the nature of her condition. Doctors predicted that Aunt Lamedze would only live until 14. But last month, she defied that, turning 18 with a matric certificate under her belt. But the Lord has called my name. To me, you were never normal. However, it had nothing to do with your condition. You were never normal in terms of your personality. I mean, how could one person be so selfless, so caring and so beautiful, both externally and internally? Her mother, Belon Palazze, sat calmly during the entire service, but there were moments which visibly reminded her of her daughter. 
ha ke na motho o tlile go ntshegisa ka mogwa o ne o ntshegisa ka teng ke tlile go misa smile sa gago the way o ne o rata go mpinela ka teng ke tlile go misa go bina ga gago one of Palazzi's wishes to meet the president was fulfilled two days before her 18th birthday. Go well, our hero, our first lady. You made an impact, we felt it. That's why we are all here. The community of Hebron says it's saddened that its dynamite will never walk these streets again. Many say they will miss her infectious laugh and greetings as she passed by, but are comforted in knowing that she left a legacy of lessons for them to use in their daily lives. And so, on the 21st of April 2017, a hero's resting place is clearly marked in Hebron. Zikona Chona, Hebron in the northwest. The Nigerian pastor accused of molesting more than 30 young women in his congregation will remain in jail until the 3rd of May. The case was remanded in the Port Elizabeth Magistrates Court. His legal team's request for an urgent bail application was not granted. Supporters and critics of the pastor gathered in court today. No bail! No bail! No bail! Adamant that the leader of Jesus Dominion International shouldn't receive bail, Gender activists also called for the church to be shut down. You are coming from Nigeria yes. 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 to our to our country. Yes. Belittling our religion. Yes. Our religious. Yes. It is time yes. Yes. for our religious leaders yes. Yes. to coordinate themselves yes. as they have just done. Yes. When they were saying Zuma fall down. Yes. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Some congregants came to support a man they affectionately refer to as Papa. They believe this is an attack against him because he's Nigerian. In court, the pastor stood in the dock without his signature sunglasses, surrounded by 12 heavily armed police officers. The matter's back in court on the 3rd of May to allow the investigating team time to gather more evidence. There is still a lot of information that needs to be compiled and we are not in a better position to explain everything at the moment because this spans a lot of other provinces that we need to go and check all the information and verify everything. As, as soon as we are done with that, then we will be in a better position to explain exactly from human trafficking, there could be more charges that could be added, then we need to clarify on those issues. The accused has also raised the ire of many in the religious community who say his actions are damaging to their entire fraternity. Sandy McCowan, Port Elizabeth. The Independent Police Investigative Directorate says President Jacob Zuma has yet to respond to its request to suspend Khomotso Patlane. The directorate wants the acting National Police Commissioner suspended pending the resolution of its corruption investigation against him. In court papers, it claims that Patlane has done everything in his power to block its investigation into his financial affairs. Live crossings, she crossed Three months ago, Acting National Police Commissioner Khomotil Patlane had this to say about claims he deliberately tried to interfere in the corruption investigation against him. I can only be defeating the ends of justice if I have um, interfered with an investigation that I was, I was aware of. I was not aware of any such uh, uh, investigation. The IPID says Patlani was lying to the nation when he made this comment, as he had been aware that it was probing investigator Paul O'Sullivan's complaint against him since the 9th of May 2016. That investigation centres on the construction of Patlani's Sable Hills home. Its builders and subcontractors have testified it was funded partly with cash payments of anywhere between 5,000 and 350,000 rand at a time, paid from the boot of Patlani's car. 
IPID has also revealed that Patlani sold a number of his vehicles to the inspector car company at up to 250,000 Rand more than the vehicle's actual market value. Inspector Car has also said that it gave Patlane and his wife a VW Polo and Hilux as part of a sponsorship, which began two months after Patlane was appointed as acting National Police Commissioner. Then there are the questions of how Patlane and his wife managed to make additional payments of 2.2 million rand into their bond account over the last five years. All this information has been included in the IPID's response to Patlane's bid to overturn a search warrant used to secure an 80,000 rand sound system that the directorate believes was a kickback. The IPID is probing Patlane's time as Police Forensic Sciences Laboratory Head and the awarding of almost 100 million rands worth of tenders to certain forensic equipment providers while he was in charge. It claims investigators involved in the case have been threatened and alleges Patlane interfered with witnesses. Of Earlier this month, we asked new police minister Fekile Mbalula about how he would deal with the apparent hostility between Patlane and the IPID. The IPD must do its job and uh, within the prescripts of the constitution and uh, they must do their job and they will get the support from the minister and also from parliament. And uh, equally, uh, General Patlani, he must understand the role of IPD. For now though, the minister says he will wait for the outcome of Patlani's court battle with the IPID before he comments on these latest damning claims. Karen Moore, Johannesburg. The South African Federation of Trade Unions it's, is holding its inaugural conference in Gauteng this weekend. Proceedings kicked off today. Its launch means competition for COSATU. Veteran unionist Zuelinzi Mavavi is the convener of the U new union federation. Its congress is expected to elect leaders this weekend. SAFTU is already facing its first challenge. Trade Union Federation FEDUSA is taking it to court over its name. And further afield, Britain's Queen Elizabeth, the world's longest reigning monarch, celebrated her 91st birthday today. The celebration was marked by artillery gun salutes in London's Hyde Park and at the Tower of London. Despite her age, the Queen still regularly carries out official duties. However, she has cut back on the number of engagements in recent years. And a small Canadian town has suddenly become a tourist attraction. That's because of a giant iceberg that's hovering offshore. Fairyland only has a population of around 500 people. Its residents are used to seeing icebergs, but this one is much bigger than usual. Banting proponent Professor Tim Noakes has been found not guilty of professional misconduct. The finding was made by an independent committee set up by the Health Professions Council of South Africa. It was tasked with probing a complaint that Noakes had given unconventional medical advice via social media. He'd advised a woman to wean her baby onto a low-carb, high-fat diet. And a reminder, if you've missed any of the stories we're tracking for you tonight, we are on Twitter and Facebook. Facebook, that's at E News Direct, or you can head on over to our website, that's enca.com forward slash direct. Your business news and your weekend weather forecast after this. So Sanral wants to take legal action against motorists who are not paying for e-tolls. The roads agency says it needs to look at alternative methods to pay for road construction. Sanral claims that about 30 to 40 percent of road users are paying e-toll accounts, with motorists owing it more than six billion rand. Officials say they're worried that they'll struggle to, to attract investors after the country's sovereign credit ratings downgrade. Let's check in with the Weather Center. Here's Candace.
Welcome to the weather centre on Friday night where we can expect a dry day across the country on Saturday. We'll see a bit of cloud over the northeastern and eastern parts, but overall sunny and warm weather is expected across South Africa with that hot weather persisting over the western parts. In Kwasili Natal, warmer temperatures are expected on Saturday with a sunny day throughout the province, 27 degrees for Peter Maritzburg, Lady Smith and Richard Bay. Slightly warmer conditions are expected into the eastern Cape with highs in the middle and upper 20s. We'll see fine and dry weather here with a bit of cloud into Port Elizabeth at 26. We'll also see some cloud passing over the southern part of the Western Cape. Very little change in the weather here at the moment with the hot weather continuing over the interior as well as over the western part of the province. Fine and dry weather continues for the Northern Cape, 36 for Alexander Bay, Prisca and Kimberley at 28. It's a cold start of the day for the Free State, 3 degrees in the morning for Bethlehem and Bloemfontein at 23 and 26 degrees. Warm weather continues for the northwest, 26 for Mahi King with a partly cloudy and dry day. And you'll see a bit of cloud over the eastern part of the province. No rain for Limpopo, but with partly cloudy and warm weather on Saturday, 28 for Lepalale, Polokwane and Zanin in the mid-20s. You'll also see a bit of cloud over the eastern part of Mpumalanga, 27 for Bombela. Dry weather continues for Gauteng on Saturday with a mostly clear day and most highs in the mid-20s. Pretoria partly cloudy at 27 degrees. We'll see a few thunder showers into Mahi King on Sunday with a high of 24, as well as some rain late in the day along the east coast. And on Monday we're expecting rain along the east coast, as well as a few thunder showers in the northeast, with that fine and dry weather still in the forecast in the west. That's all from the Weather Centre for now. Have a great weekend. Here's what's coming up in your world of entertainment after the break. Theatre reflects life on a local stage. Welcome back. Drama for Life's South African theatre season has officially kicked off at Wits University. Yep, the annual festival uses drama to reflect, shape and influence society. Here's a look. For Harnessing the power of drama to bolster activism. That's the objective of the Drama for Life program as it marks 10 years. The celebrations unfolding on the stage of Wits University's Nunnery Theatre and Paul Norco's production His Story kick-started this year's South African theatre season. You see, theatre is a reflection of life. Theatre makes you think. So every time we put up a play in a wall, in a church, under the tree, we, 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 we put it in such a way that it makes our community or the members of the audience who are watching question themselves, question their well-being. We don't try to come up with solutions, but we try to come up with possibilities. This year, audiences can look forward to productions written around the theme of new histories and new beginnings. The work of this season is about training young directors to intersect with community and to speak a language in which uh, community can become involved in issues, rather than reciting the history of the past. Um, we're asking these directors to be lead, cultural leaders. Johannesburg audiences have until the 22nd of April to take in the festival. Lauren Rose Joseph, Johannesburg. A reminder of your top stories before we say goodbye. At least 18 pupils have been killed in a minibus accident. Untlamezi Palazze Zest for Life is remembered as she's laid to rest. And that's a wrap from the E! News Direct team. Your favourite drama, Rhythm City, is coming up next. Yep, to share your views, you can send an email to enewsdirect at etv.co.za or you can just talk to us on Twitter and Facebook and our handle is at enewsdirect. Indeed, until Monday night, have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.